Hi friends, this is Dave of JavaCodeJunkie.com and welcome to another Java Swing video tutorial. In this episode, we're going to examine the JMenu class, as well as all of the supporting classes that you need to make great looking menus in Java Swing. The JMenu class allows you to create a pop-up window containing menu items that are displayed in a menu bar. Let's get straight to the code to see how all of the Java Swing menu classes interact to create good looking and functional menus. As you can see, I've already created a new Java Swing project, and then that project I have a mainframe class. And inside the mainframe class, I've created some private instance variables. You'll see a J menu bar, a J menu, and three J menu items. This will allow us to create a menu that we will attach to our J frame. In the initialize method that's called from the mainframe constructor, I create the J frame standard JFrame that we've been using all along. I also create a font that I then use with the help of the UI Manager class to increase the font size or set the font size of the menu, the menu item, the checkbox menu item, and radio button menu items that we're going to create. So first we're going to create a J menu bar. Menu bar is the container that's going to contain all of the menus and the menu items. And the code for that is menu bar equals new j menu bar. Now, once we have the container, which is the menu bar, we're going to create a menu. I'm going to create one menu, which I'll call a file menu. So, file menu equals new j menu. And I'll give it some text file. Now that we have the container, which is the menu bar, and a file menu, we need some menu items. So I'm going to create three menu items that we're then going to attach to our file menu. New menu item equals new J menu item. Again, some text. The word new followed by three dots. Then we have another menu item, save menu item, equals new J menu item, save. And the third and final menu item for this demonstration is an exit menu item. Exit menu item equals new J menu item, exit. We'll then use the add method of the file menu object to add those menus to the file menu. So file menu dot add new menu item file menu dot add save menu item and file menu dot add exit menu item. Now that we have the menu items added to the file menu, we have to add the file menu to the menu bar. So menu bar dot add file menu. And the final step so that we will see our menu is we have to add it to our J frame. So frame dot set J menu bar menu bar. We'll save. We will right click on the project name, run as Java application, and we should see a menu, which is the file menu. Click on the file menu, we'll see our new save and exit menu items. These are simple steps that are necessary to create a menu in Java Swing. Menu items are actually buttons, so another thing that we can do with a menu item is to add a graphic. We're going to add an image to the new menu item. I've created a new .gif file and dropped it into an images folder. I'll just show you the file. This is 
the new .gif image, and it simply contains a representation of a new document. So I'll close that. We'll go to Eclipse, Image Icon, Icon, equals New Image Icon, Images, slash, new.gif. We'll close that in quotes. And then we will say new menu item. And then we'll use a method of the J menu item class. New menu item dot set icon icon. Now, if we run the program, we should see the graphic to the left of the text on the menu item. And there it is. We can control the spacing between the graphic and the text. New menu item. Dot set icon text gap. 10 pixels. And run it again. Let's see now that there's an extra 10 pixels in between the graphic and the menu item text on the new menu item only, not the save or the exit. So you can see they're a little out of alignment here, but we could fix that by also putting the gap to 10 pixels on the save and the exit menu item. As you can see, I've added the icon text gap to the save menu item and the exit menu item. So let's run and we'll see now the three menu item text should be in alignment. Menus support two kinds of keyboard alternatives, and they are mnemonics and accelerators. And this is instead of just selection by a mouse click. Mnemonics offer a way to use the keyboard to navigate the menu hierarchy. Accelerators, on the other hand, offer keyboard shortcuts to bypass the navigating of the menu hierarchy. Mnemonics are for all users. Accelerators are for power users. Mnemonic is a key that makes an already visible menu item be chosen, whereas an accelerator is a key combination that causes a menu item to be chosen whether or not it is visible. So let's take a look at how we're going to implement that on our menu. The file menu item is always visible, so we're going to attach a mnemonic to it. File menu dot set mnemonic. And it uses the key event class. Key event dot virtual key vk underscore f. Let's run. Now you'll see that the f is underlined in the file menu. So I can simply use the alt and the f combination to open the menu. Alt f opens the file menu. Since the new save and exit menu items are not always visible, we can't use the mnemonic on them as we did on the file menu. We have to use an accelerator key combination in order to select those when they are not visible. So let's go to the new menu item and add an accelerator. New menu item dot set accelerator keystroke dot get keystroke key event dot virtual key n and then the action event dot control mask. Let's once again run the program to test. Click up, see it's the same. We'll click to close and now use the control M combination. We can't see it. In order to see the action event that's generated on the control N combination, we actually have to add an action listener to the new menu item. Since we're going to do the same for all three menu items, in this case, I'm just going to make the this class implement action listener. Once we implement action listener, we need the unimplemented method, which is action perform. And here is where we trap for the action event. So I'm going to make this a little generic so that I can uh, use it on all three. If e.getSource is an instance of 
J menu item. So that first ensures that it is a J menu item that generated the event. J menu item item equals, and I'm going to cast the result since I know it is a J menu item at this point, since I've already checked for it. E dot get source. Next, I'll get the text from the menu item. String text equals item dot get text. And then I'll do a sys out to the console with the text that I got from the button. Now that I've coded the action perform method, I actually have to set the listener on the new menu item. New menu item dot add action listener this run control n and now new is displayed in the console i'm going to add the same code to each of the other two menu items the save and the exit because they are identical to what we just did for the new menu item now that I've added the accelerator and the action listener to both of the other menu items, the save and the exit, we'll run and have a look at that just to ensure that the other two work the same as the new menu item. So control the letter S for save and control the letter X for exit. And of course, control and the letter N for new. Everything still works. And last but not least, I want to show you how to add a radio button, a checkbox, and a submenu, and a separator to a menu item. So let's just move down in our code. File menu. Dot add new J radio button menu item. It's a mouthful. I'm just going to use the text radio button. Organize our imports with Control shift o Same thing for a checkbox menu item, file menu, dot add, new checkbox menu item, the word checkbox. That should be J checkbox menu item, of course. Organize our imports. And then the submenu. You create a submenu by adding a menu to a menu. So file menu dot add new J menu sub menu. And of course, a separator. So what I'm going to do is move the exit menu item below, tighten this up a bit, and then file menu dot add separator. Now well, let's run this and hopefully I've done everything correctly here. Click on the file menu. So now we still have the new and save. We haven't adjusted the uh, gap for these new items that we added, but that's easily done just the same as for the other three that we did initially. We have a radio button that we can select. And if we click, it's still selected. Same with the checkbox. And the submenu item, all we have to do is add the same menu items to our submenu to have that flash out over here so that we can have a separate menu. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing so that you don't miss any content when I release new videos. Thanks again for hanging out with me today. It's been a pleasure as always, and I hope to see you again in the next video. Until then, stay safe and keep on coding.